Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing blind purchasing. I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about some tips that I have if you have to blind purchase, as well as talk to you guys about what criteria I look for when I make blind purchases. So let's get into it. Now first things first, I'm testing out a new way to film my camera. So if I'm looking off camera more than usual, please forgive me. I'm just trying to figure this out the best way possible. But let's get into why you guys are really here and not just my silly face looking off in different areas of the camera. Blind buying, it's something that I never really recommend doing. I always recommend you guys getting your hands on decants or samples or at least being able to go and try it on your skin before you make a purchase. But especially with the current state of the world right now, blind buying is inevitable for a lot of people. So I wanted to give you guys some tips and also talk to you guys a little bit about why I blind buy and the criteria that I use to make these types of purchases. Just to sum it up, TLDR, if you cannot blind buy, if there's a way that you can get a sample or a decant, do that first. Make sure you test it on your skin. Don't listen to reviewers. Don't listen to fun, spicy ads, and don't listen to word of mouth, maybe from friends or family. You have to try it on your skin to see if it's something that you like that works with your body chemistry and meets a criteria for a fragrance that you'd be willing to invest your money in. But if you have to blind buy, hopefully these tips will help you guys out. And let me just state that a lot of these are very just common tips. And most of you guys know this already, but just in case some of you don't know, maybe these will be helpful. So first things first is if you are going to make a purchase of a fragrance from a store and you're purchasing it blind, look to see what their return policy is. Some stores specifically with beauty items like makeup, skincare, and fragrance will not let you get your money back if you try something and don't like it. I understand the reasoning behind this, but as a consumer, especially if you're looking at spending 50, 100, two, three, four hundred dollars on a bottle of perfume, you wanna make sure that you're not left with something that's unwearable or something that you might swap or sell and you'll lose some money on. So if you have the opportunity to purchase it from a place that has an excellent return policy in regards to fragrance, that would be my first tip. I always like to say if you're looking to buy some type of designer fragrance and you live in the States, Ulta has an amazing return policy. So I would definitely recommend purchasing from Ulta if you have the opportunity because they have a great return policy on used fragrance, you'll get your money back. Or if you, if it's without a specific window, you might even be able to do a return in exchange. It depends on the situation specifically. I'm not saying that they can or will, but they have a fantastic return policy where you can get your money back or at least do an exchange for another fragrance. And it's a safe, easy way to purchase authentic fragrances and have a great return policy if you are unable to try them. No, this video was in no way sponsored by Ulta. I just used to work for Ulta and I have an in-depth knowledge of their return policy and I would definitely recommend that as a safe place to purchase designer fragrances like Dior, or Dolce & Gabbana, Chanel, um, brands like that is a great place to purchase it because they have a fantastic return policy. But there are other stores, other boutiques, other ways you can purchase fragrances. As long as there's a really good solid um, return policy in place, if you have to purchase something blind and it turns out not working on your skin, that would be my very first tip for you guys. It's the safest way to protect your investment in case you're left with a fragrance that you don't like or doesn't work on your skin or the like. The second tip that I have is one that I use specifically when I make uh, blind purchases. And there are certain brands, certain noses, and certain noses that work within certain brands where I trust generally how that fragrance is going to smell based on previous experience with other scents. So specifically, I there are a few houses that I just blindly love that I will just purchase because generally those houses are cohesive the fragrances don't smell the same, but they all smell like they're under the same house, if that makes any sense. It's kind of like how Dior fragrances smell like Dior and Chanel fragrances smell like Chanel or these indie houses smell like this indie house. I generally have a good experience in regards to understanding how this house works on my skin 
and also how much I love or dislike the house. And so when I purchase fragrances blind from these houses, I generally trust that there's a higher likelihood that I'm gonna like this scent than not like this scent just based off previous fragrances. Now that doesn't mean that this is going to work in every single situation. And there have been a few cases where I've either been sorely disappointed or very happy because maybe I tried to purchase something from a house I didn't like and they completely wowed me. But at the end of the day, it's been a really good kind of baseline for me to judge if I should purchase a new release from this house or not. The last tip that I have, and again, I don't have too many tips for you guys because it's pretty common knowledge. You probably already know this stuff already. When it comes down to making blind purchases, I would definitely make sure you do some research into reviews. Now, that doesn't mean that you should trust reviews, blindly trust reviews, but use reviews to give you a general idea of maybe the fragrance's performance, maybe there's little quirks in the composition that you don't like, maybe see if people are comparing it, contrasting it to other fragrances that you have a good knowledge and experience with. And you can say, well, everyone says it smells really similar to this and I love that scent, so it might be a little bit safer for me to make this blind purchase or everyone says it smells identical to this and I hate this fragrance, so I'm definitely not gonna make the purchase. Obviously, at the end of the day, the most important person when it comes down to if a fragrance smells good on their skin is you. When it smells on your skin in regards to your body chemistry, when it, uh, how it smells on your skin depending on where you are, obviously humidity can take a play, um, hotter weather, colder weather, um, drier weather, all of this can affect on top of body chemistry how a fragrance smells and performs on your skin. So it's going to definitely depend on you and your experience. But looking at reviews, written anonymous reviews on Amazon, uh, you can go to fragrance groups, Fragrantica, Base Notes, Reddit. There's a lot of different places you can go to get a general idea of how a fragrance might smell, comparisons to other scents, or maybe little quirks of a scent. Like this citrus fragrance smells weirdly fecal. And you could be like, oh no, staying far away from that one. There's a lot of information you can use to help give you a better foundation or more confidence in making a blind purchase. And I definitely would say look to reviews, but don't use them as the end all be all. Obviously everyone says this fragrance smells amazing, so it's gonna smell amazing. It probably does, but for you specifically, it might not. So trust your own instincts, trust your own experience. Don't let anybody tell you that this fragrance is good if it smells horrible on you, but do use reviews to kind of help give you a little bit more confidence and a little bit more information to maybe help you make a more confident blind purchase when it comes to a fragrance. So those are the tips when I talk about making blind purchases, but do understand that this is all common knowledge. Most people know this stuff. I'm preaching to the choir. A lot of you guys are like, obviously, of course. But I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about blind purchasing and why I blind purchase because I would say 90% of my purchases are blind. First things first, do as I say, not as I do. I do make a lot of blind purchases for YouTube. YouTube is a hobby and I love it. I am a fragrance collector. I collect fragrances. So I wear and purchase scents in a different way than your normal responsible consumer would make and make purchases and make fragrance uh, decisions in regards to their budget. My budget for scent is large. It is a thing I like to spend money on. No, I am not in debt. I don't have any issues like that. But don't look at my fragrance purchasing habits in regards to the amount of fragrance that I purchase and the amount of blind buying that I do and say, that's how you should do it. No, 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 no. You wanna make sure that you're making smart consumer decisions and you're not putting yourself into unneedless, um, stupid amounts of debt for scented water. It's not worth it. But I do make a lot of blind purchases so I can review fragrances for you guys. There'll be new releases that come out and I do a lot of purchasing for my channel. Obviously I make purchases in regards to finding discounts, using coupon codes, um, doing swaps, things like that. I rarely pay full price for a bottle of perfume. And sometimes when you are purchasing from places like that, you are taking a greater risk in regards to getting, um, you know, having good return policies or not being 150% sure if a fragrance is authentic, depending on where you purchase, who you purchase it from and the like. 
but for my channel and my hobby and my love for fragrance and my collection, I do make a large amount of blind purchases. The most important rule that I look for of the three that I told you has to do with my knowledge of noses and my knowledge of houses. Now, I'm not saying I have an extensive knowledge, but I do have a general knowledge of how houses, specifically let's look at designer houses, how designer houses smell and which ones work on my skin, which ones I'm super excited for and which ones I'm not so excited for. I don't think that there's any, I don't think that there's any secret that I'm not super excited about Marc Jacobs. I do like individual scents from this house. I do, I think some of them are fantastic. But as a whole, the fragrances don't excite me and they don't elicit an urgency to make blind purchases. I wouldn't blind purchase a Marc Jacobs fragrance. I would try it first because for the most part, they don't wow me. I don't have a necessary need to make or add these fragrances to my collection. So I don't have a necessity to blind purchase. I would obviously try them first before I would make a purchase. That's just that house. But... If we look at Chanel, if we look at specifically Armani Privé, if we look at Lancome, these are houses that I love, houses that I just have a huge amount of respect for and a good amount of knowledge into how their fragrances smell and work on my skin. So I can definitely say when a new Lancome fragrance comes out or a new Chanel fragrance comes out, for the most part, I can make a blind purchase and have a good amount of I would say confidence in that that fragrance I will at least enjoy and work for me. So Marc Jacobs is the type of house I wouldn't blind buy from and fragrances like Lancome and Chanel are fragrances houses that I would make blind purchases with. And for the most part, I probably really like them. That doesn't mean that every single time I'm correct, but for the most part, it's worked for me. And that's basically how I do a lot of my blind purchases when it comes to full price designer bottle purchases. It's how I do it, it's how it's worked for me, and it's definitely a tip and a recommendation I can make to you guys if it baby helps. At the end of the day, making blind purchases is a risk. It doesn't just risk in regards to money, but opportunity cost as well. You might be deciding between two bottles of perfume to wear to an event, and you decide to blind buy this one blindly instead of the other and then it gets shipped to you it doesn't work your events over you send it back and then you miss out on an opportunity to smell fragrance that you really really liked so it's not just a money loss it's an opportunity loss as well so i think it's important to make smart consumer decisions when it comes down to making luxury unnecessary purchases like fragrance or skincare or beauty or things like that and just making the most educated experience decision you can it's just a smart thing to do and i know with my purchasing habits with fragrance, a lot of people would definitely say I don't make smart consumer purchases. You guys can only judge from what I show you and I completely understand that, but I hope you're taking my words to heart. I wouldn't wanna push anyone into a life of too much debt and needless excess in regards to luxury items that are, unnecess that are not a necessity. But I do know I love purchasing fragrance. I do understand the excitement of seeing a new scent, wanting to smell it and wear it and experience it. And if you have to make that blind buy purchase, I hope that these tips help you guys out in making smart, confident consumer purchases. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, sorry if I'm looking all over the place. I am trying a new way to film to finally be able to look at the viewfinder. So if this was very distracting, I'm so very sorry. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.